not the most ideal person actually to live in a city. Um, and I'll give you a list of reasons why this is. Uh, since I was a child, I've suffered quite acute vertigo and um, have uh, often had a very um, a profound fear of um, tall buildings and, and felt that I might fall down and actually potentially die. So uh, adding to this, um, being a musician, I've played lots in loud venues and over the years I've, I've actually developed quite profound uh, hearing loss as well. So I'm quite sensitive to loud noises, particularly in cities. Uh, and if this wasn't enough, I uh, also um, am quite susceptible to um, anxiety around uh, crowded spaces and in social situations. And, um, and have been known at times to um, have quite random and uh, but very public um, panic attacks. So um, it all bodes well for today's talk. <laughs> I might fall apart at any moment, so just beware when you're in the front row. Um, so anyway, yes, phobia, that's me. Um, but please don't get me wrong, I actually really do love cities. And, uh, you know, I, I have an obsession, probably an unhealthy obsession with architecture, both old and new. I love moving through city spaces. And also, uh, you know, I, I, I love it when a city comes alive, particularly during a festival time. So, you, I'm probably what, you know, probably an urban environment conundrum if you wanted to call me something, I suppose, but I am an artist. That's probably a better term. Uh, so, as a musician, I've always been interested in the space between the notes, those quiet moments, a time for pause. And I really believe that a city can have this as well, um, space between buildings, um, space to accentuate the beauty and tenderness <coughs> and melancholy that exists between uh, buildings in cities and, and between people as well. So, um, my goodness, I love Adelaide. It's, it's a place that really encourages a sense of open space and, and quietness, and I really want to defend that is something quite positive, and I think Adelaide really can lead the way as a quiet city in the world. But uh, it is a city that's often known to go to sleep early. It, it often falls silent at around 6 p.m. most nights. But I think this is a bad thing. I really think it's a good thing. Um, and, you know, uh, I have to say, though, as, as a gay man walking through the city like Adelaide, I often feel quite susceptible to uh, potential physical danger. And um, I'm often looking out for those spaces that I might go to as a kind of safety point, a quiet space or just a, a place of escape. So I'm, I'm often looking out for these spaces that are both safe and sound. So I guess I want to ask the city, particularly the city of Adelaide, um, is this quiet worth preserving? And what are the potentials of these quiet spaces as we think about the future of our cities? And once we've found these quiet spaces, are they just at risk of disappearing completely? Do we just want to keep filling these spaces up with more things and more noise? So if I was to ask each and every one of you right now to uh, describe the sound of your city in just one word, could you do it? Does it sound healthy? Does it feel dangerous, safe, happy, joyful? Is it too loud? Is it too soft? And does quietness have a vibrancy all of its own? So this is the project. I'm on a quest to acquire spaces in the city. I want to create a project that is a sonic health service, really, for, for built environments that helps people such as myself who have social anxieties or people that are just on the lookout for those calm places of retreat. Really, to build a public commons for a community of quiet seekers. And I call this project Stereo Public to crowdsource the quiet. Stereo, because I believe that in our urban environments we do need balance of both noisy and uh, a silent. Uh, but public, because in order to achieve a project like this, it needs participation from the left, right, and in between, from all sides. And to crowdsource the quiet in really small steps, one city at a time, and I'm beginning with the city of Adelaide. But how to go about this? What kind of tools are needed in order to find quiet spaces? Um, and then once we found them, how do we then share them with other people? And uh, encourage other, part, other people to participate in the quiet seeking revolution as well.
call it. So I've started working with a local design studio, Free Range Future, and we're building uh, a prototype for uh, a smartphone application that people can download for free. They can go out into their city, they can find these quiet spaces, they can record a, a small audio snapshot of it, take a picture, uh, give it an emotional tag, and then have the option of uploading this to, to a sound map that will exist online and also on the app. But the online space will also encourage people uh, in remote areas or people with mobility issues also to participate. So you might have a memory of a quiet space in a city. You don't need to necessarily physically be, be in it to contribute to the project. And also online and on the app, you'll also be able to then take people's recordings of spaces and hopefully then to remix them and to start create quiet sound pieces that then can be placed onto these locations and then be shared with other people as they pass them by. I also would like to conduct physical listening walks, quiet listening walks of the city to take people through these places and to stop and to experience them, not only with their ears but with their bodies, to experience what they might be like. And because as a musician and as an artist I, and participatory works, I'm not interested in that sort of empty gesture of you give me something and I do something with it. So what I'm really wanting to do is reciprocate uh, for any participation by creating short compositions for everybody who participates and gift that back to that person that becomes their own uh, special um, and discreet sound piece which can be placed upon their location. And one of the future incarnations of this project, I'm starting to talk to Dal Wright from Design Ethic to build a, a quiet sound pod that could be placed in one or more, perhaps like this, where people can go into and have a seat, have a moment of quiet time, perhaps put a pair of headphones on or, or listen to some ambient quiet noise for just a moment of time, and then as a kind of transitional space, move back into the city but what and where are these quiet spaces? So I've been going into the city of Adelaide and believe me, it's actually not that easy to find quiet spaces, even in a place like Adelaide. It's been a challenge, but it's a challenge that I've completely embraced. And I thought what I'd do today is actually take us on a bit of a quiet listening walk to five quiet spaces that I found and just to stop here and just have a moment of pause and listen to a recording of the space that I found. Really, this is just a way to inspire you to start thinking about ways you might like to participate in this project and think about your own quiet space and what that might be, because it's always very different, because some spaces are quiet, some spaces are noisy, and noise can actually give you a sense of quiet as well, hence conundrums once again. So I want to start here at this parklet, and this is a, um, this is a parklet that is located just behind what's near the Adelaide City Council Customer Centre, uh, between about five different buildings. And of course in Adelaide we're surrounded by parks, but in my quest I think parks are, are fantastic, but also quite an easy quiet space to go to. I'm interested in what are those spaces between buildings that already exist. And this is one that I particularly love to go to and sit in and just have a moment where you can read, talk to other people, during a working day just to sit and have that moment. In fact, the Law Library building um, in Adelaide University has one of the most quiet spaces I've actually found and I thought, what a great opportunity to place some study modules or, or, or a place there that students can go to um, to get away from the busyness that, that goes on above, above them. Um, uh, some other places include uh, like a church space. I do have a slide of one, and not being a religious person, I don't, don't often go into churches. But uh, I've just discovered in Adelaide, being the city of churches, that their doors are open constantly throughout the day, and you can just go in there and you can sit, and it doesn't matter what denomination you are, or being a non religious person, you can just go there and have that, that time. It's a cool space, uh, and it's also a uh, a space you can just sort of move through back into the city again. Uh, I also have found places like uh, walkways to car parks. There's a particularly lovely one that um, is near the Frome Street car park. 
and next to that is a, a power station but the power station actually provides a really wonderful hum that uh, gives you a sort of a constant drone that reverberates against the concrete wall a bit like this one so you can just go there and and, and sit for a moment in time and uh, and just have that that space there's probably one more space that I wanted to talk about anyway before I do stop talking, which is um, the fountain, which is in uh, Victoria Square, or Tanzanyanga. Um, and that's probably a very good example. You're probably mostly familiar with this fountain because it's a good example of a sonically soothing space. And one of those uh, spaces that you can actually listen to the sound of the water. And what it does is actually neutralizes the traffic and the human made noise that's around you. <laughs> so I'm just going to leave it there and hopefully we can have a chat about it over, you know, um, a cup of tea or something afterwards. Thank you very much.